Amateur Logic Shorts. Squirrel! Create your own video security system with motion capture with Motion iOS. You will need the following software. The web links to the downloads will be listed at the bottom of the slides. After you watch this short video, you may want to head over to the Motion iOS GitHub project page for more detail. I chose the Raspberry Pi Zero W because of its low power consumption and small size, but mostly because it has built-in Wi-Fi. But there are advantages to using more powerful Raspberry Pi, such as the Model 3B or 4. With their faster processors, they'll be able to process the video much better than the Raspberry Pi Zeros. But that faster processing power comes at a price, power consumption. That being said, it makes the Raspberry Pi 3s and 4s more capable of supporting multiple USB cameras. I should also mention that Motion iOS supports the internally connected Raspberry Pi cameras as well. We'll be focusing on motion activated image capturing. For this project, we'll need a Raspberry Pi 0W, a micro SD card, class 10 or faster, and I recommend at least an 8 gig or larger a Raspberry Pi camera or a USB webcam, a non-to-go cable if you're using a USB webcam, mini HDMI to HDMI adapter, that's if you're going to use an external monitor to see what you're doing and it's very useful for troubleshooting, and lastly a 5 volt power source. Here are the steps that we'll be following, downloading and installing the required software, preparing the SD card and formatting it, and writing the Motion iOS image to the card, preparing the WPA supplicant file and copying it to the SD card, setting up the hardware, locating it on the wireless network and booting it up for the first time, logging in and configuring Motion iOS, then we're going to have some fun. You can use SD memory card formatter at the link below to format your SD card. You will also want Raspberry Pi Imager to write the image. Download the proper image for your Pi. Notepad++ is a preferred text editor. Angry IP Scanner is available from this link. You may need to set proper firewall settings. Format your SD card. Ignore any pop-up message like this after reading your Motion iOS image file. Fusing Raspberry Pi Imager, choose image there. Use custom image from your computer. Locate the Motion iOS image file. Click open. Choose storage. Choose your SD card. Click right, then wait. Those previous steps should have been fairly self-explanatory. Here's the tricky part, the WPA supplicant config file. You need this file because there's no way to connect the Raspberry Pi up to the network to get things set up. So you have to include this file. On that file, it's very syntax specific. So on the following page, you're going to see exactly what you need to put into Notepad++. Okay, once you've created your WPA supplicant config file, you need to write it to the SD card in the root partition. Just note that there will only be one readable partition, so when you have it plugged into your computer, there may be several partitions that the image created, but only one of them will be readable. And this is where you need to copy that WPA supplicant config file to. We're almost there. Now it's time to connect with the hardware. Safely eject the micro SD card from your computer and insert it into the Raspberry Pi micro SD card slot. Go ahead and connect up any adapters or cables that are required for your particular setup. If you're using a external USB camera, you'll need to plug in the on-to-go cable or the OTG cable in order to connect to your USB webcam. If you're using an HDMI monitor, you'll need that mini adapter just go ahead and connect the mini adapter directly into the Raspberry Pi and connect the end of your HDMI cable to it. If you're using the internal Raspberry Pi camera, you can plug it in now. Just be very careful. These devices are very static sensitive. Once everything's connected, you can connect up your Raspberry Pi to a 5 volt power source. The last step. We need to find out where your Motion iOS device is located on your wireless network. To do that, we have a couple of different methods. Firstly, you can use the Angry Advanced IP Scanner and scan your whole network segment. 
or you can look in your wireless router and you should be able to find a table of the various wireless devices that I've connected to it. Lastly, if you have the luxury of having an HDMI monitor connected, you can simply look at the screen and it will show you which IP address it received from the wireless router. Okay, now that you've determined your Motion iOS IP address, let's open up a web browser and enter that IP address in. In my case, it's 192.168.2.113. Now we want to log in. We enter in admin with no password. Click the login button. And you'll see that I currently have no camera configured yet. And if I click here, I can add one. Now I happen to be using a Logitech C920 in addition to the built-in camera, so I want to make sure that I pick the right camera. So if I click on the box here, you'll notice a drop-down list appears. I'm going to select the webcam C920. So I select that, and I click OK. Now in a minute or two, the camera is going to initialize, and you can see I've got a nice video here of my front yard. Um, this is where your, your main controls are, basically. Uh, you can shut down, you can reboot, uh, just by clicking either of these buttons here. Uh, you can save your configuration and you can actually restore it as well. Um, that's probably a good thing to do. Once you get your settings set correctly, you'll want to do that for sure because as I'm about to show you, the settings are, uh, there's quite a few. Um, the first thing we want to probably do is 320 by 240. That's that's pretty pretty fuzzy looking, isn't it? So um, I have found in my particular case the best balance between um, clarity and uh, detection seems to be for this particular camera and on the Raspberry Pi Zero W, 800 by 600 seems to work best. So we also have something called uh, motion detection. You're going to have to experiment with this and what what this does here um, it's it's all based on frame frame changes that's how the motion detection works so it's looking for changes in the video uh, that's the trigger for the uh, capture of the image so um, this one's a little bit high I'm gonna drop it down you don't want to drop that down too much you're going to see another uh, setting down here called light switch detection. Um, if you're in an area like I am where you tend to get a lot of cloud cover, um, sun going in and out behind the clouds is going to cause false triggering if you have this frame, frame change detection threshold set too low. So experiment with this uh, threshold and also the light switch detection. The higher you make this, um, the more it ignores uh, changes uh, with respect to, uh, to, to brightness. So changes in brightness you would adjust with this slider here and that's really good for uh, dealing with things like uh, sun going in behind the clouds and coming out again and, and causing uh, a capture. Clicking on the camera itself You'll notice uh, another uh, small set of uh, options comes up and appears at the top left corner of the screen. Um, incidentally, um, if I click on the Open Pictures browser, uh, it'll open up a directory of all the images. Uh, so each day a new folder is created. All the images recorded on that day appears within the folder itself. Okay, you'll notice at the bottom here I also have some options. Um, if I want to delete all of the images that I captured within the folder, there's a delete all, or you can individually download or, or delete uh, specific uh, images. Uh, clicking on, a, on, a, on an image will just bring up a preview. Uh, the really cool thing about uh, Motion iOS is the time lapse, and uh, I'm going to make a time lapse and show you what that looks like. One last thing to show you before we go, let's go into the settings menu very quickly. I'll show you, you can actually set up uh, Motion iOS to email you uh, notifications. 
and to do that you just click on the emotions notifications you can set up your SMTP settings here and uh, just quickly I should note that um, it doesn't support uh, two-factor authentication so if you have a an email account uh, with two-factor authentication or security enabled uh, this won't work for you so in those cases I recommend you just create another email account for that purpose wait there is more download motion I app from Google Play post your questions in the comments section please remember to like and subscribe